Monte Zoncalan. It's the mountain that loomed large for the peloton on stage 14 of the Giro d'Italia. Another long day in the saddle, 205 k's in total from the start in Cittadella, and with the first half of the stage flat, it could prove difficult for the climber to get into the early break. The climbing would begin in earnest after 135 k's with the second category for Cella Monterest, but this day was all about the final one. The so-called easier side of the Zoncolin, but still 14 k's long, 8.5%, with ramps of over 20 in the final 3 k to the line. We did get some climbers in the early break, and two of them stood out from the others. Balcomolema of Trek Segafredo and the New Zealand national champion George Bennett of Jumbo Visma. Both of them had teammates, and Yolo Cometa also had two riders up the road with Albanese and Fortunato. Behind them, it was Astana and not Ineos Grenadiers who were controlling, looking to set up Alexander Vlasov for the stage win, but with the leader's advantage almost seven minutes as Molima took first place over that penultimate climb, they were going to have their work cut out. They made a good fist of it though, particularly on the ensuing descent which they ripped down. So fast in fact, there were some major splits behind them. Egan Bernal was there, attentive as ever, but the other GC contenders had all been distanced. They would eventually make it back, but how much energy had that cost them? Up front, it was Jan Tratnik of Bahrain Victorious who made the first big move, and he got a decent gap. Lorenzo Fortunato of Yolo Cometa, the rider who set off in pursuit. With Astana losing men left, right and centre, it was time for Ineos to thank them for their work and set to it themselves. And as the two riders came together at the front of the race, the pace was still high, high enough for Vincenzo Nibli to get dropped, the shark on an off day. With two kilometres to go, the gradient of the road and the pace of Fortunato proved too much for Tratnik, and the Italian was riding towards a historical win. Simon Yates was the first big name to try his hand from the group of favourites, and whilst Bernal stuck with him, nobody else could. Avonapol was suffering, and so too were the rest. They say that fortune favours the brave, and Fortunato would upset everybody today. The 25-year-old surely couldn't have dreamt of such a big win in his first Grand Tour, but that's exactly what he's got. Bernal was flying again though. Too strong for everybody else, even for Simon Yates, and the pink jersey would tighten his grip on it, sprinting out of the saddle all the way to the finish line. He's done everything right at this year's Giro d'Italia, and it's going to be a big ask to take that race lead away from him. Yates would cross the line 11 seconds later, a promising ride by him, but for Vlasov, it was a day to forget. He'd concede over a minute. The day belonged to this man though, the 10th rider to take their first ever Grand Tour stage win in the first 14 stages of this race. Behind him it was Tratnik, then Covey, the only other rider from the early break to stay clear of Bernal. Mollema sandwiched between him and Yates, Bennett and Oliveira having to settle for 7th and 8th. Solid riding from Caruso and Martinez saw them in 9th and 10th with Judo Ciccone on the same time, Bookman and Carthy just behind that. Well, there have been significant changes on the GC, albeit not at the very top of it. Egan Bernal strengthens his grip on the pink jersey with another dominant display. Simon Yates is now behind him at just over a minute and a half. Caruso remains in third, Vlasov down to fourth, Carthy down to fifth. Then it's Bookman and Ciccone, now in eighth is Evanapol. Martinez and Bardet both move up a place, with Foss slipping just outside the top ten. It's a slightly easier and much shorter day for everybody tomorrow. 147 kilometers, most of that on a circuit which is in both Italy and Slovenia. There's a fourth category climb on the lap which they'll tackle three times, 1.7 k's at 8% and then an undulating final 17 kilometers to the finish line in Gorica. Potentially, it's another big opportunity for a breakaway success. Make sure you join us tomorrow on GCN Plus for our live coverage if you can. Territory restrictions apply. See you then.